Hey y'all, Billy and Michelle from Permapastures Farm. Today is all about this high tunnel and what we need to do to retrofit it. All right, so we've covered in a previous video how we basically bought some of that bag soil. Like everybody else, we got busy. And we took some of that bag soil and we stuck it in there to hill up the potatoes. Well, it, it didn't work worth a hoot. I mean, everybody knows out there that there's a problem with a lot of that bagged soil. And I don't necessarily blame those companies. But anyway, we did it and we had some problems. Now, we're going to do a couple of things in here today. Number one, we're going to retrofit this. We're going to try a simple means before we go with a nuclear option. So that simple means being that we got some of the 18 day compost that we produced a little while ago. You've probably seen the video. Um, we're gonna take some of that and we're gonna dress the top of this. There's a few weeds in here, but big deal right now. We're gonna dress the top of this with that stuff and then see, see the cool thing about having some of this compost that isn't completely off and running yet. It's not actually complete compost. It's still in the composting process. It's getting there. The cool thing about that is, and this is a theory and we're going to try it out right here, we're hoping that as it finishes composting in place, it will tie up a lot of the toxins that may be in that soil. We haven't tested it, we haven't done we just know empirically that it ain't working out. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to show you down there. Remember, go back, especially in these times, go back and watch that video we did on how to make 18 day compost. We also show you how to do it in a 30 day system with a chicken tractor on steroids. So we're gonna try that first before we go with a nuclear option to see if the composting process will lock up some of those toxins. Toxins, will it? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna use the easy method first, and then we're gonna move into more nuclear stuff when it comes down to it. Now, I'm, I'm reticent to say the word nuclear for a whole host of reasons, but honey, um, what did, I mean, we had mostly just, um, potatoes in here right? right now what's going to take its place i mean clearly there's going to be a succession and we're going to have to disturb this quite a bit uh there's going to be some carrots we're going to sow some carrots um maybe some sort of uh beans like a nitro i haven't figured out exactly which ones but some sort of nitrogen fixing uh legume um and then after that something really quick that way we can in the fall we can put our fall crops in here Right, so if you, as you can see behind, remember y'all, we just put this thing up in, in truth. I mean, we haven't done a whole lot. We got sweet potatoes that are kicking over here. Everything that didn't have that bag soil on it is doing great. We got tomatoes kicking over there. We got all kinds of cool things going on. But in addition to that, we're also in this high tunnel and we are way behind. Like, look, a lot of you folks out there kick yourselves because you're thinking, oh man, this is getting ahead of me. This is getting ahead of me. I'm losing this time of year, that's going to happen. Okay, that's that's one of the crazy things about this lifestyle, but it's also a great thing because it gives you options. Well, one of the things we're going to do also is we're going to come up, and it was inspired uh, by my friends at Deep South Homestead. I've seen a number of other ways to do it, but we got screen on here in the side of this. We had it from the very beginning, but we have never rigged it up to where we could roll it up. So we're going to show you. Uh, we're going to take some of those skills from a previous life being a journeyman electrician, and we're going to apply them today to see about coming up with a really cool way of getting these sides squared away. Okay, so if you want to learn how to make compost, we have a playlist. Um, it'll be linked down below. It's our 18-day compost playlist. This is for all you folks wondering about Coco. Look at where he is. He's happy, awesome mountain bull, eating a bunch of weeds, doing exactly what he's gonna, you know, what he's supposed to do. And look how he's integrated into things. There he is, the bees are right in there. He's helping the bees out. This is permaculture, this is symbiosis. He's helping the bees out by knocking down some of the forage. And the bees are also still, because we're not down here wiping everything out with a mower, the bees are still able to get things like um, over there that chicory and a bunch of other things that are flowering this time of year. Permaculture, y'all, that's the key. Look at that. Nothing like getting breakfast when you're out 
doing your chores. All right, experiment in action. Now, I know a number of people are wondering, hey, why didn't you just use a tractor and roll up the hill? We don't have a tractor, and most of you out there don't either. So we try to make sh absolutely sure that we do every bit of this stuff with our BMW, you know, boots made for walking. That's how we do it. Plus, it kind of keeps you in shape, and I'm trying to get in better shape these days, so ain't nothing wrong with that. So all we're going to do is kind of put it on top. We'll do it something of a top dressing but a little bit thicker than that, okay? And we're gonna hope and we're gonna pray, this is gonna be the simple solution. We're gonna hope and pray that this works out. We'll let you know how it pans out. side of this greenhouse got the other project knocked out now underneath this plastic that goes plumb to the bottom we got some screen in here that we put in a while back um, and in truth honestly there's a fair piece of this that should have been done a while ago but once again don't beat yourself over the projects that kind of get neglected you get to them when you can it's just the nature of this life so what I have here and my solution is going to be um, a while ago I talked about using you know these skills that you build up throughout your life that you don't necessarily know are going to be useful in the farming world well i am a journeyman electrician and i've run i don't know i don't know how many thousands of feet of conduit and this just happens to be three quarter emt or electrical metallical metallic tubing now what i could do if i wanted i could sit here and do a back-to-back -back 90 and make something of a right angle a 90 degree angle and then another 90 but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do 30 because of how low this thing is going to be sitting to the ground. So in my case, on this end, it's going to be coming plumb to the ground. So if I have a back-to-back -back 90, it's going to be tough to try to roll this thing up. So I'm going to do, in my case, about a 30-degree bend. I'm going to offset this thing. Um, let's see here. I'm going to come down. I'll just get here so you can see it a little bit better. This thing has degrees on the side of it, so I'm just going to go ahead... flip it through and I want it to be somewhat slight I'm gonna use that calibrated eyeball BAM it's been a while since I did this but I still got it y'all gotta love it so this is gonna be my crank handle on this end so I'm gonna have it stick out about yay far I would love to have more of a I would love to have more of a handle in there or you know have it offset a little bit more but hey beggars can't be choosers so now all we're going to do is i'm going to situate it here at the bottom now i want to give a shout out and a hat tip to my friends down at deep south homestead because when they did their version of this um this is the benefit of youtube y'all and having friends is that you can take some of the mistakes or some of the things they've learned and apply it to yourself so instead of having this thing roll up on the outside like that all it's going to do is have the water come down. It's going to collect water in there. So we're going to do it the other way. Hat tip to Deep South Homestead. So now all we're going to do is run down here. This is so simple. I got set screw couplings. And basically, we'll show you how that works. This joins one pipe to the next. Now, they make two different types. They make a set screw and they make a compression where you need a couple of channel locks to put it on there. I'm going to go with the set screw because it's going to dig into there. Could I get compression couplings that are going to hold really tight? probably yeah more than likely i could but i know that this little screw is going to dig into the pipe and that's exactly what i want so with that said we're just going to go ahead and stretch this out the whole way and we'll talk to you on the other end of okay honey drag out the next piece if you look at it this thing's about 50 feet long so there you have it um problem I'm running into is I got to make an offset handle on the other end of it so this comes right up to the edge of there I can't work with that 
Um, I'm just gonna cut it back a little bit, bend another offset, and then we'll be off and running. So I'm gonna do it right about here, put this bandsaw. And remember, ring the ends of your pipe. You'll be glad you did. So now I got this other one here. I can kind of, I'll go ahead and bend my offset and see exactly how I want to do it. I was initially going to put one crank handle on this, but I also remember Danny and them having one on both ends. Uh, and this is longer. Now I did see one at a, at, a, at a place in town where they had one on one side. It was real janky. I didn't like the way it looked. So it just makes sense to put one on both ends. So it, I know for sure it'll crank up easy. So I'll make another offset. This one here, because the ground slopes a little bit, that was by design, which by the way, y'all, it all channels when the rain sheds off of here, it channels down this way and heads into what will be a future swale. So let me bend that. Bam, that's money. Got it laid out, got a crank handle on each end. But like I said, we don't want to be rolling this thing up on the outside like this. The rain's going to shed and it's going to collect in here. Which, by the way, is exactly what they were doing at that greenhouse over in Marshall, uh, North Carolina, where I looked at what they had. That's not at all what we want. We want to make sure that it rolls from the inside so all this stuff sheds to the outside. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to take this. We're all going to get on it. I don't know that we could film this part. But we're going to basically take this and stick it underneath the plastic. We're going to secure it, and then we're going to check it out. And you can do it, Mom. It's just so hot, isn't it, oh boy? It's just so hot for the puppy. All right, so the next thing on board, if you can hear me over Milk Boy over there panting. Um, so here's the deal we have here. Okay, so you see this line right here going all the way down. That's where it was stuck in the channel before. Well... This whole thing slopes, so all I'm going to do, I mean, I'm out in the field, so I'm just going to use the old-fashioned measuring system. I know my hand, so from the back of here to the end of here is about six inches. So I started on the end, and I'm wherever that line is, where it's six inches, all I'm going to do, poke a tiny little hole, stick a tie wrap down through there, or zip tie, whatever you choose to call it, and I'm reasonably sure this is going to work. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to yank it really, really tight. Because I need it to grab on as I roll up. Now you're thinking, some of you might be thinking, oh shoot, you just cut a hole in your plastic. Well, it's on the bottom side. It's not that, it's of no consequence there. So we're going to do it all the way down here. All right, so time to take the test run, all right? Ready, honey? Yeah. Bam, it's doing exactly what it ought to. The only complaint I have is it sags a little bit in the middle here because I didn't get the tie wraps exactly straight, but I can live with that. There's plenty of airflow going through here now. So up until now, what we had to do was open the doors, hope for a cross breeze. Now we can shut the doors. Now milk boy ain't getting up in here and um, you know, any other unwanted critters are not going to be getting up in here. So now we can, we got this side done, but we cannot do the other side because the bees are tripping. As a little side note, I think whenever the barometric pressure seems to be higher, they seem to be more agitated. So we're not gonna work that other side for now. So the idea is between the screens on the doors and between the screens on the side, and then we have a louver up top here on this end, the dominant wind almost 100% of the time comes from that direction to this direction. So now it can funnel through the bottom run that air right up out of the top that's exactly it's been doing great even without this but i think it's going to do even better so all we got to do now is secure the handles and then we can leave it all right that knot video intact so here we are we just got a round turn with two half inches once the pressure's off of it i mean this thing will hold itself so in an ideal world i'd want to singe the ends because this is type 2 nylon um you know but I'm not, I mean, this is something that I am not, you can let it go, honey. So at this point, everything's staying in place. So let's take a trip down at the other end. I'll show you what we did on the handle end. So we got this, um, we got this shade cloth. And yeah, I know <laughs> you're probably thinking, well, it doesn't come down far enough. Well, beggars can't be choosers. And this thing we got at a major discount. And frankly, it was the only one we could find where people weren't sold out. Ideally, I'd love this thing to come down further along but it seems to not have any negative effects 
so we have it the sun tracks really on the other side of this thing more so so it's sitting down low about down here on the other side but this side where it gets less sun or when the sun is less high in the sky well it's less protected but anyway this this uh, rope holding the shade cloth on there basically just goes around this and hits that eyelet so we got the same thing on each end but look at it it's perfectly functional now the air can go through the bottom come out the top all, all right y'all right, that's a wrap now as a little side note remember you're going to have when you do this kind of work you're going to have projects that you start on and if you're like me i can't stand leaving loose ends but it's necessary sometimes there's sometimes no way of getting around it we should have done this a while ago hasn't been any really negative consequences but we had this going on that going on these for all the people that are new to this lifestyle that is the reality of farming it really is i mean there's no getting around it but hey problem is done problem is fixed so the way it was working or the way this whole thing is designed to work at this point we got screen right here we got screen on the other end we got these double doors that open so we got flow that way the dominant wind actually comes from that direction this way so it's more ideal if we're able to lift up the other side in terms of uh, airflow because I can even feel can you feel it right now it's yeah it's coming from behind us but we'll get that when the bees are chilled later on this evening but we got the airflow here it can come out the louver up top when we get some power down here eventually that's an AC actuated louver I could easily convert it over to DC and that's exactly what I'll do or actually I'll take another page out of Danny and Wanda's book down there and get one that actuates on the basis of heat where it pushes a piston and then bam how cool is that so let's just take another little trip over here there you have it I mean really no problem at all everything's good to go we got screen on the side it can get that airflow and that's exactly what we need right now now we're probably thinking that we're ultimately going to have to we'll see what it means in terms of watering we've never done a high tunnel anywhere near to this extent before we've had plenty of greenhouses that were low so we're learning and we want to thank again deep south homestead for giving us all this wonderful instruction and we've cut and pasted by and large for those that don't know we've cut and pasted everything that was relevant of what they were doing that we could apply here so remember, if you want to go back, please check out their playlist on how to do this. It is by far the most comprehensive thing out there. And I want to give a shout out to them once again for all the wonderful instruction and how to go about this. So hey, y'all, remember, check out the Permaculture Pimpcast. It's our new podcast that we got going out there. Also, leave a review if you like what you're hearing. I think you're going to like it. Um, also, remember, we got that swale class coming up at the end of the month. It's in the description box down below. Anybody wondering how to do your earthworks? We're covering that too. Bone sauce, world's best deer repellent. We got it all inside here in these beds. And even with the doors open, have the rabbits or anything so far been, or anything been messing with the beds Not since we put bed, that bone no. sauce? No. But those seed trays, well, that was yeah, another well, story. Well, my seed trays that were outside the greenhouse in a little bit of shade, they tore those up. Yeah, rabbits. So. Don't worry, problem is the solution. I need more bone sauce and I need bones. I got rabbits that are starting to become a pest. Guess what? Guess what's gonna be in that bone sauce? Well, you figured that out. Uh, Comfrey, I think we got more at the website. We're running out quick, so if you want some, go ahead and get it. Hopefully with all this rain, we'll keep that coming for a while. All right, y'all, hopefully this video has been a blessing to you. Till next time, this is Billy and the Homestead Hunting Michelle from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.